There's a place that I love to run and play There's a place that I sing new songs of praise Dancing with my father God in fields of grace Dancing with my father God in fields of grace There's a place that I lose myself within There's a place that I find myself again Dancing with my Father God in fields of grace Dancing with my Father God in fields of grace There's a place where religion found me and died There's a place that I lose my selfish pride Dancing with my father, God, it feels a grace Dancing with my father, God, it feels a grace Dancing with my Father, God, it feels a grace Dancing with my Father, God, it feels a grace I love my Father, my Father loves me I dance for my Father, my Father sings over me Said I love my father, my father loves me I dance for my father, my father sings over me Hallelujah. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing can take that away from me yeah. I tell you nothing, nothing, nothing can take that away from me oh. There's a place where religion finally dies There's a place that I lose my selfish pride Dancing with my father God The greatest thing You'll ever learn Is just to love And be loved In return Is that what we've been talking about here in Gabriel? <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to the Ecclesia Cafe in Canada. This is the angel, the bartender, the huge today. Hello, hello, thank you. Thank you so much everybody and thank you, angel. Thank you so much for the introduction. <laughs> what a friend I have. Always oh, What a partner you are here in this show. Everybody should have an angel to work with. I, I recommend it very highly. And today, today is a, uh, we're getting into something here that uh, is very important to me, as they all are. But it's, you know, we called our media ministry, we call it Get Real. And then we added 2000 on there. Get Real 2000. <laughs> and that wasn't just for those who don't know the Lord for them to get real and see what life is all about. But mainly, for those who believe, those who say they are Christians, or anybody else, that uh, they should get real and see what the Bible really says to get closer to God and just kind of pull away and uh, get closer to God through the Holy Spirit. The righteous don't live by the law. They live by faith. And that's what this whole thing is about. Not by law, but by faith. Are you, are you ready? The title is The Real Thing. <laughs> you like that? Although some hold the people are saved by keeping the law of Moses. You heard that? We will see here that this was answered long ago in the book of Galatians. Yet, a widespread belief in, in many religions 
believe that uh, observing laws are necessary for being right with God. And they are. But we're going to see how you do it. Many Christians and Jews emphasize the fourth commandment, which calls for keeping the Sabbath as the most important commandment in spite of Romans 14, 5 and Colossians 2, 16 and similar passages. Let's look at these passages right now that I just mentioned. Romans 14, 5 in the New International Version. It says, one man considers one day more sacred than the other. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. So there you go. It's not all that. That's not all that important. We read about Jesus doing all kinds of things on the Sabbath that he wasn't supposed to do. In the New Living Translation, in Colossians chapter two, verse sixteen, it says. Don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules were only shadows of the real thing, Christ himself. We become children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. In Galatians, and now we're going to go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, it says, You are all children of God by believing in Christ Jesus. Verse 27, All of you were baptized in Christ, having put on Christ as if he were your clothes. Verse 28, There is no Jew or Greek there is no slave or free. There is no male or female. Let me stop there for a minute. If there's no male or female, then there's no homosexual, right? Continuing on. Because you belong to Christ Jesus, you are all one. Verse 29. You who belong to Christ are Abraham's seed. Remember that. You will receive what God has promised. In the book of Genesis, God said, let's make man in our own image. That's plural, right? Some of these things just kind of slip by us when we're reading. Now, we are multitudes. We, all of us, are multitudes. Yet, the scripture says here, we are one in Christ. Same thing. Paul writes in the book of Galatians that everyone who has not kept the whole law perfectly is cursed. Ah, now we're getting into it, okay? But Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Ooh. We're going to see where the scripture says that. It's nothing to be afraid of. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. In NIV, Galatians chapter 3, verse 10, it says, All who rely on observing the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. 11. Clearly, no one is justified before God by the law, because the righteous will live by faith. Verse 12. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. 14. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. Who are Gentiles? Gentiles are everybody who isn't a Jew. So that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Can 
it be much more clearer than that? James adds to this by writing that we are guilty if we offend even one point of the law. Just one. There's all these laws and stuff that we, we read in the Old Testament. If you offend one of those, you've done, done it to all of them. Meaning that if we even break one little commandment of the law, we have broken them all. Let's look at James in the New Living Translation, chapter 2, verse 10. It says, And the person who keeps all of the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's laws. For the same God who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. So if you murder someone, you have broken the entire law. Even if you do not commit adultery. Twelve. So whenever you speak, or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law of love. The law that set you free. We, we saw some uh, scripture there that is talking about the law of love. It's to love one another. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That covered all of the Ten Commandments. Legalism is what we're talking about. There's many other beliefs out there. The way we might approach someone who is a legalist is to share passages that state Christ as the end of the law and do it prayerfully without an argument. Did you notice that Christ is the end of the law? There's no more laws after Christ. The laws that we've been living by and uh, that the Old Testament uh, people had to live by, they ended with, with uh, Jesus Christ on the cross. And now when we go to be with him, the only law is him. <laughs> As we said before, that would be love. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer for God, for the Israelites, is that they may be saved. See, Paul didn't consider them as being saved. Two, for I am testifying about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. 3. Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Verse 4. Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. The strongest and most popular teachings in this world are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Not this knowledge that we know. They no longer recognize the righteousness that comes from God, so they establish their own righteousness. <laughs> Each denomination or legalistic religion has their own set of laws, which have been established by their boards and their elders and whoever else is running the church. Would God give each of us a different direction? Maybe. <laughs> Why? To cause us to seek knowledge. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Hey, get your head out of the sand. Let's go to the Contemporary English Bible, the CEB. You're going to be probably hearing more about that. In Romans, again, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Well then, what can we say about our ancestor, Abraham? Our ancestor, Abraham. Two, if he became acceptable to God because of what he did, then he would have something to brag about. But he would never be able to brag about it to God. Three, the scripture says God accepted Abraham because Abraham had faith in him. Four, Money paid to workers isn't a gift. It is something they earn by working. Five. But you, 
you cannot make God accept you because of something you do. God accepts sinners only because they have faith in Him. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 11 If perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood highlight that a Levitical priesthood for on the basis of it the law was given to the people why was there still need for an, another priest to come? One in the order of Melchizedek not in the order of Aaron for when there is a change of the priesthood there must also be a change of the law Paul writes to the church in Ephesus what this is in a wonderfully clear and simple way in the New International Reader's Version Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 it says God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is a gift. It's, it is God's gift. Verse 9. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. New Living Translation Romans chapter 10 verse 12. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect, that they all have the same Lord. I don't know if every Jew and Gentile would, would agree with that. Gentiles remember anybody who isn't a Jew, which would be Arabs, Muslims, Christians, everybody, who generously gives his riches to all who ask for them. Verse 13, For anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Anyone. 14. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? 15. And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is what the scripture means when they say, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Whether they be rich or poor, educated or uneducated, reasonable or bigoted, friendly or antagonistic, the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. When it is used by the well-taught believer in accordance with the teaching of the Bible, it is bound to have a supernatural effect on anyone, whoever they are, and will bring many to a knowledge of salvation which is the real thing right? when we finally realize that salvation didn't come from us but by faith by, God, by the grace of God then we begin to realize or we begin to I got my notes down here. I do better when I take my notes. You should be taking notes too. Then we begin to truly, don't laugh at me. I know, you take notes all the time. Yep, I do. Angel. But when we finally realize that our salvation didn't come from us, then we begin to truly accept all that God has provided in advance for us. Then we start to realize that if this salvation isn't by works, it's, it's, it's just by faith, it's not by works, then there must be more to this. It must, there must have been something, and even the scriptures say that, that all this was prepared in advance for us. So then we begin to accept that. And wherever God would take us, the path that he would take us, that we seek him first, let him go ahead of us, and then we follow. That's the real thing, folks. It's simple. It's not a big, complicated thing. Just let go and let God. I'm in a New York state of mind.